Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Group Exhibit 2018. I invite all of you to please take a seat, enjoy a complimentary coffee, water, or juice uh, while we sit down and listen to a great morning on the hydrogen production and energy storage. Our first, presentation, or our first presentation of this session is Pathways to Green Energy. And here to speak with you today is the Vice President of Business Development um, at Nell Hydrogen, Mr. Everett Anderson. Thank you, Helen. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. Uh, another year at Hanover Fair. Um, so I've put together some slides today to give a little bit update on uh, uh, on our activities at uh, Nell Hydrogen. Um, most of my uh, talk will be focused uh, in our uh, PEM electrolyzer work, um, formerly known as Proton uh, Onsite. Um, so I'll go through a brief company introduction, um, uh, talk uh, again about our kind of breadth of product offerings, and then um, some activities in the emerging markets for hydrogen, um, specifically in, uh, um, as it relates to, uh, to green hydrogen, um, and then where we see ourselves going and kind of uh, uh, pathways to uh, further reduce cost and, and expand the market. So um, uh, Nell Hydrogen is uh, 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 now the largest, uh, we'll call pure play hydrogen company. Um, we uh, are um, formed of uh, basically several divisions um, through uh, various acquisitions over the last few years. Uh, the most recent one is the uh, Proton on-site acquisition um, last year, middle of last year. Um, we're focusing on PIM electrolyzers. Uh, we have uh, uh, the traditional Nell group out of uh, Norway that uh, has a long history in uh, large-scale alkaline electrolyzers. Um, and uh, we have a hydrogen fueling division um, based out of Denmark, formerly the H2 Logic Group, uh, that manufactures and delivers uh, a hydrogen uh, station solutions. Um, so the uniqueness of, of Nell Hydrogen is we have uh, kind of both of the commercial um, uh, electrolysis technologies that are available today um, within, uh, under one roof, and so we can offer um, whatever makes the most sense for a uh, particular customer for, uh, um, for on-site hydrogen generation. And so we have the liquid uh, alkaline electrolyte uh, KOH systems um, and then the uh, proton exchange membrane based ele uh, electrolyzers uh, as well. Um, so this creates a pretty broad product suite. Um, um, with uh, small scale uh, electrolyzers from a few hundred cc's a minute to, uh, to several kilograms a day, um, primarily based in the, on the PEM systems. Uh, we've got some medium scale, both PEM and alkaline, um, uh, in, uh, in kind of packaged solutions uh, for customers. Um, and then we also have large scale megawatt, multi megawatt systems, um, both in PEM and alkaline um, as well. We're, uh, we have a long history. If you look at uh, Nell's founding back in the uh, 1920s, um, Proton has uh, uh, been around for uh, over 20 years as well on the PEM side. Um, and combined, we've got uh, over 3,500 systems um, in customer hands in 80 countries around the world. Um, we're proud of our kind of uh, uh, fielded customer base, and uh, we feel like we're unmatched from certainly from the PEM technology um, in uh, in operating hours in customer hands, um, representing, as I said, almost 20 years of experience um, over a wide range of product platforms, uh, representing you know tens of megawatts of installed capacity. So I think um, uh, I don't have to spend a lot of time on this chart, but you know certainly um, uh, there's a uh, attractiveness of hydrogen in um, uh, in energy storage applications, especially at um, uh, large scale and uh, long duration energy storage, um, where uh, uh, chemical storage 
really is the only option, um, either uh, um, with hydrogen directly or uh, or other pathways through hydrogen to uh, 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 to other carbon fuels. And um, so we see a lot of opportunity with this, and that's the reason why we're looking at continuing motivating ourselves to. Um, to go to larger scale and to, uh, to drive down costs to be competitive in this market. Um, on the PEM side, we've, we've specifically for uh, energy storage and renewable applications, we've developed our M-Series product line. Um, comes in uh, uh, two platforms, a one megawatt, two megawatt system. It's based on a 250 kilowatt cell stack building block um, and it's a modular approach and you can basically um, uh, scale uh, over that range in, in increments of, uh, of 250 kilowatts. Um, it's uh, skid based, so it can be easily installed within an existing facility, or it also can be uh, mounted within an uh, ISO container and then used in, uh, for customers that are looking for uh, an outdoor installation instead or don't have a f building space available. Um, it really uh, capitalizes on our, uh, all of our history with uh, other pen products, so it, it has that same reliability and, uh, uh, and safety uh, history that we have with, uh, with our other fleets. Um, I've, I've, we mentioned this before, uh, just an update. Uh, we did send a, a, a large order for these M-Series units in China. We're delivering those units now. We've got um, multi-megawatts already delivered to customer hands. Um, this particular application is in mobility for bus fueling, um, and, but we see other opportunities there as well. Um, uh, another exciting project is in California. Uh, this is uh, with Sunline Transit. Uh, again, a bus fueling ap application. Um, uh, looking for, a, 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 this is a two megawatt, 900 kilogram a day on-site uh, generation plant um, that will feed um, our sister company's uh, uh, fueling product, uh, H2 Station. Um, so there, it'll be um, multiple station modules, multiple dispensers. Um, for uh, basically capacity to f fuel up to 26 fuel cell buses. And um, so we're excited about this project. We're actually uh, uh, finishing up uh, the, uh, the fabrication of the two megawatt plant and uh, we'll be delivering that shortly to the site. Um, and then working with the customer to install the rest of the, that equipment uh, so that they can uh, generate green hydrogen on that site for, uh, for their bus fueling needs. Um, this is a kind of uh, schematic uh, picture of, uh, of the two megawatt unit, um, basically uh, kind of representing installed within a, within a building. Uh, that's what we'll be doing in Sunlight Transit. We'll actually, we're actually constructing a, a separate building to install the electrolyzer and also a, a 200 bar supply compressor. So, uh, so you see here, basically, you have a the classified uh, zone where the, uh, the production equipment is and then behind a, a, a wall or in a separate uh, room you have the non-classified uh, area for the rectifiers and control system and uh, power distribution. Um, I put this slide in because there's always a discussion about uh, the scope of supply in these projects. Um, I think um, I was talking to uh, to some of my other uh, competitors in this space, and we're always uh, uh, struggling with trying to provide a standard product. Um, but it seems as though all of these projects, there's slightly, you know, different needs for uh, for the customer. So um, this kind of gives a, uh, maybe a bit of a complex uh, uh, illustration of kind of how we see the the scope of supply for these electrolyzer projects. So the the items that are colored in blue are, are what we would call our, our base uh, offering. So the electrolysis skids, um, the uh, controller, the rectifiers, all the way back to the transformer, um, and then some level of, uh, of kind of drying, a little bit of pre-cooling um, to, uh, to take some of the water out. And then beyond that, we, we 
either offer to the customer that we can supply um, uh, these various ancillaries ourselves or they can supply it. That way you can, you can kind of um, work with the customer to, to see what they already have in terms of their own infrastructure. So things like uh, a hydrogen dryer, if you need a higher spec on the, the, the hydrogen uh, from a purity perspective, uh, thermal control unit, sometimes that's available. Um, uh, a water supply system, air compressor, um, and, uh, and then obviously um, on, the, on the output side, some type of storage or intermediate storage, um, depending on what the customer need is. So the other interesting thing is, is um, kind of comes along with this kind of uh, diagram is when you start talking about efficiency, where do you draw the box around you know, um, uh, the efficiency of the electrolyzer? Are you just talking at the stack? Are you talking in the stack and the power conversion? Are you including all the ancillaries? So it, um, it really, from a customer education perspective, um, they really need to understand what they're comparing to across different um, product offerings from different customers and also what the scope of supply is. Um, we also are looking at containerized options, as I mentioned. Here's um, uh, um, a recent uh, kind of project that we're looking to, uh, to develop something. Um, again, try to come up with a standard package that we could offer to more than one customer. So um, this is uh, for one of our one megawatt uh, systems, uh, uh, basically uh, 200 normal cubic meters per hour. What you see is packaged in two 40-foot ISO containers. So we have one container on the bottom, which again is the classified area. It has the process skids. Um, in this case, we've left room in that um, first container um, to integrate a supply, a, a, a mechanical compressor. Uh, so certainly um, for both industrial clients and also with areas like in fueling, um, having the ability as an option for a compressor um, is an attractive uh, 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 area for, uh, for a particular customer. And then you have the, the non-classified container in the back, which again, power distribution, power conversion, controls, and it can fit other ancillary equipment like a DI water system or, or air compressor. So a relatively compact package. Um, uh, you can put uh, the two containers basically uh, side by side and make your connections uh, directly through the wall. And so it's a relatively small footprint with a um, uh, including all the equipment that's needed for, uh, for on-site generation. Um, just some uh, discussion about future developments. So um, certainly uh, we've, uh, uh, on the Nell Hydrogen side, we've publicized the, certainly our ability with our alkaline electrolyzers to uh, create this, um, I would say, a, a array of electrolyzer stacks sharing a balance of plant and uh, what this has really done is enabled a, a, a really shift in the cost structure for large-scale alkaline electrolyzers. Um, and then basically being able to then uh, repeat this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, clustered approach for multiple times to scale um, as large as you want. This uh, basically shows a, a, a schematic for a 400 megawatt, um, basically centralized electrolyzer plant uh, to uh, to generate green hydrogen, um, and we're really this same approach can be applied to PEM electrolyzers as well, and we're looking to uh, um, to capitalize on the learnings that uh, that our sister organization has already done in looking at alkaline and apply that to PEM. Um, so we're in the process of of, uh, of kind of uh, finalizing a 20 megawatt layout on the PEM side. Um, and again, that same uh, dramatic cost reduction that we saw on the alkaline side, uh, we've, we've verified that it translates over to the PEM side as well. Um, I think uh, um, there's been quite a, a bit of studies looking at uh, uh, where the cost can go for specifically for PEM electrolysis in this case. Um, uh, this is some work that was done out of the National Renew Renewable Energy Lab, uh, the DOE in, in uh, Colorado, where they show basically um, their estimate of, of kind of where uh, the cost of uh, hydrogen was today by on-site generation using electrolysis. Um, and then the impact of things like decreased electricity cost um, 
and then obviously decreasing uh, the capital cost as well. Um, I think a, a, a really key point here is the, uh, uh, we're seeing more and more of the availability of cheap electricity um, uh, due to uh, basically the, the kind of overcapacity of renewables at this point. Uh, um, and certainly we are seeing places now where, where two cent uh, uh, electricity is available um, uh, under long term contract. And that really changes the paradigm uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, the cost to produce hydrogen um, and really um, can draw you in line with uh, basically uh, fuel parity with uh, generating hydrogen from uh, steam methane reforming. Um, so we've done our own look at, uh, um, at our technology and uh, identified areas where we see um, uh, uh, basically uh, uh, our technolo technology roadmap is focused. Um, uh, so if you use basically our cost today for a two megawatt electrolyzer, um, there's uh, four key areas, uh, scale up, um, uh, advancing the stack technology further, um, uh, looking at increased current density to again get more hydrogen out of a uh, uh, specific active area of, uh, of, of cell stack, um, and then better integration of the power electronics with the characteristics of the electrolyzer in terms of current and voltage. And all of these areas um, uh, basically indicate room for significant cost reduction. Uh, um, and so you see here, if you, can, um, if you can make progress on these areas, you can look to be um, at least 50% cost reduction versus where we are today. Um, I just included this. This kind of gives from more from a technical perspective, um, kind of where the, we see the state of the art is today in terms of PEM electrolysis. Um, where we um, readily see it can go tomorrow, and, uh, and, then, um, and then looking out further where we think the technology uh, can go to. And, and so uh, we have a very good understanding and feel uh, for these parameters today, and, um, and are confident that, uh, that these are achievable in the relatively short term. Um, this just kind of indicates the areas where we're focusing our technology development in order to support that roadmap. Um, so in all areas from a materials development to looking at advanced manufacturing methods uh, and ultimately looking at advanced design concepts. So in summary, um, uh, we uh, just wanted to present kind of an overview of, of Nell Hydrogen at this point. Um, uh, we're, uh, we feel to be a technology leader both in alkaline and PEM electrolysis technology um, as well as hydrogen fueling. And uh, we um, um, currently today offer uh, hydrogen solutions uh, for all sectors, uh, both industrial and now in these emerging markets as well, uh, capitalizing on that experience. Um, and uh, I think we see a huge opportunity in these emerging markets going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much for that presentation, Mr. Anderson. At this point, we have time for uh, a couple of questions. If there's any on the floor, I could bring the microphone down to you. All right, no, no need to be shy, but if you haven't thought of anything yet, but it occurs to you later, um, I'm sure you can drop by and speak with Mr. Anderson at his booth, uh, which is B60, to talk with Nell Hydrogen. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Helen. Our next presentation in just a few minutes uh, to continue the hydrogen production and energy storage morning here at the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Fair uh, will be on hydrogen tank safety and market familiarity. So feel free to uh, continue sitting here, grab a drink, and I'll be back with you in just a few moments. <laughs>